Welcome to the Culture Cave. We're back. To the future. Two. Uh, that was not planned. That just came out. Alan Silvestri is here again. Um, yeah, so we are doing the Back to the Future series in our movie chats for those of you who are joining us. We we just did the last one. You should go and watch that first, probably. But, you know, this is Back to the Future Part 2. Anthony, how do you feel about this one? It's always hard to ask me how I feel about Back, Back to the Future. These are uh, seminal in my upbringing. Absolutely love this film, Conrad. Of course I do. <laughs> I know this is the one you think is the least uh, least good yeah. of the three. Would you agree with that? Gun to your head. Sophie's choice. You've got to kill one of the Back to the Future movies. Which one are you killing? This one. But I'll tell there you, you what. That's, there it is. Uh, yeah, that's true. It is true. Uh, but, at the same t- <laughs> but at the same time, it's the least good, not the worst, because I, I actually really love the idea of going back and sort of living in the first film again. Um, but let's 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 not beat around the bush. This is basically a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2. This one is very much just setting up a lot of stuff for the third one. And it's, it's interesting you say that because the last movie, Back to the Future 1, ends with what looks like a very explicit setup for a sequel with Doc Brown coming back from the future. Uh, the future in that instance being 2015 tell marty that him and him and um uh, liz no jennifer that's her name him and jennifer need to come to the future with him because there's something wrong with their kids now robert zemeckis says that that was just a joke and they didn't actually plan to make a sequel to that movie which that seems like a b- pretty bold way to end your movie as a joke just be like oh would you know we're just going to explicitly set up the sequel. But it, it it rapidly becomes clear that if they had planned a sequel, maybe they hadn't got all the pieces in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, most yeah. most of the gang is back for this one. I say most. You've got Robert Zemeckis. He went off to make Who Framed Roger Rabbit in between Back to the Future 1 and, and this, but he's back with Bob Gale writing it. Um, Alan Silvestri's uh, famous score, that's back. But I'll tell you who's not back. You already know. I don't need to tell you this. But it is <laughs> Claudia Wells. I was going to say Chris McGlover first. We'll get to him. He's the showstopper, so we'll end with Chris McGlover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Claudia Wells, she's not back. She had left acting by this point, so she was recast. That's Jennifer. She was recast as a... That is really interesting to me that she left acting. Do you think that her being recast is the reason why they sort of redid the last scene from the first film uh, again? Yeah, that's, exa- that's, that's exactly why. They like uh, Robert Zemeckis has actually <clears throat> gone on record and said that he is really annoyed that they ended Back to the Future 1 the way they did because when they had to recast her, they then ha- they had to go back and, yeah. and reshoot the whole of that last scene with Elizabeth Shue in her place. So yeah, uh, Claudia Wells, she left acting so she didn't want to come back. And Crispin Glover, he wanted too much money apparently, uh, so he was replaced in the one scene that he's in with Jeffrey Weissman and a lot of prosthetics. I honestly didn't notice. <laughs> like, I didn't... Re- I Until I did my research, I was like, ah, oh, Crispin- why is Crispin Glover upside down in this movie <laughs> all the time? We're jumping ahead here, but let's do it. <laughs> See him being upside down when he was when he's like old George? Yeah. That immediately made me question the world-building chops of these writers, because I was thinking to myself, what is the reason for that? And I immediately, <laughs> yes. I immediately Googled <laughs> What can happen if you're upside down too long? And here we go. Mm. Hanging upside down could cause blood to pool the skull and pressure to build up inside the brain and eyes. This may result in congestion in the blood vessels causing strokes or even rupturing the blood vessels causing bleeding. Seizures or death may also result. Why on earth, for a medical (laughs) reason, is this man hanging upside down? I couldn't figure it out. I, I thought it was very strange at the time. And it became clear soon afterwards when I looked up who had, who had not not come back for this movie that it was clearly an attempt to just hide the fact yeah. <laughs> that Crispin Glover wasn't in that suit. Just before we get too far into that, I will say that um, I, I had a habit of watching uh, kind of classic series out of order as a kid. And this is the first <laughs> Back to the Future I ever saw. I saw this one, then the first one, then the third one. Oh, okay. So, so all of the hanging around the previous film, you had no idea about any of that. <laughs> I was just like, I, I, I feel like the fifties could do with a bit more setup than what I'm getting here. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. but like, whatever. You know, I was like five. I didn't, I didn't know any better. I did the same thing with Star Wars. I saw Return of the Jedi first, and then, and then A New Hope, and then Empire Strikes Back, and I did not have a fucking clue what was going on in Return of the Jedi. Neither, neither did George Lucas. So it's all right. No, that's true. Yeah, it's like poetry. So sort if of, they rhyme. Mm-hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I made a joke about this in the last episode, and so I have to like land the joke now because otherwise I'm never going to do it. The last thing that Doc says in Back to the Future One is, "Well, we're going. We don't need roads." And almost the first thing we see in the future is a shitload of roads with cars on them. <laughs> like <laughs> now. 
I understand that there's budgetary <laughs> concerns with always having every car flying, but I feel like he oversold that aspect of the future a little bit. Like it's not it's not Blade Runner, really, is it? Yeah, it's it's just like the freeways are now like fl- you fly on the freeways. Yeah, and like you very much have to follow the certain path as well. So like their their vision yeah. of the future is yes, we can have flying cars, but you have to have roads within the sky. Because <laughs> yeah. I would still say that's a road. Yeah, effectively, you know, it's it it serves the same purpose as a road. I suppose when they went forward in time, they weren't actually on the Sky Road yet, because that would have been really dangerous. I don't think you should ever go forward in yeah. time on an actual road in these cars. Yeah, on a on a on a freeway or whatever. Yeah. Like you're gonna you're gonna kill someone. You're gonna <laughs> telefrag them out of existence. I think. Yeah. How how did you find on on this rewatch? How did you find their depiction of 2015? Do you remember it being like this? I I do remember. Well, 2015. No, I don't remember being that. But they they didn't get everything wrong. Let's be honest. They never got everything no. wrong. The idea of Jaws 19 coming out was pretty funny because like we have had series that have gone up into the tens or whatever. So I think that yeah. I think that's a pretty funny joke. The idea that they have a cafe 80s. We actually in the last sort of five, six, seven years, we've had a lot of uh, media reliving the 80s. Yeah, yeah. 80s and 90s revival is is big, big, uh, big business these days. You know what they didn't get right though? No one really uses the word scrote anymore. Well. Well, outside of, I'm going to say Australia, they still use it. Like that, that seems like something that Australia is still flying the flag for. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Certainly not California, though. <laughs> like, Cali- I feel like California, I don't think the word scrote has ever been <laughs> in popular parlance in California. Yeah, got no scrote. But yeah, so that, that was really fun. Um, I think that clothes being made to fit you with a button, that seems to be a big thing. We don't really have that. Does it work both ways, though? That's my question. Like, I don't have a problem with clothes getting getting too big for me because i'm a 35 year old man i have a problem with clothes gradually becoming too small for me so i need i need the reverse button yeah yeah stretch it out a bit yeah (laughs) i need i need you to i need you to give me a little bit of breathing room yeah exactly (laughs) also you know i think they actually did make those those shoes those nike shoes that they were actually pretty cool. Yeah, the Nike. So they did make the Nike self-tying shoes. I want to say they did. They did some kind of hoverboard. Obviously, it's not the not the real hoverboard. Robert Zemeckis said that the hoverboard was real and that it just hadn't been released to the public because of concerns that parents had raised over the safety of them. And I'm sure that there was like at least at least a few. Ch- I would have I would have fallen for that completely. Uh, a few a few children who were like, I need to get my hands on one of these hoverboards because yeah. uh, they do. It does look pretty convincing. The main one looks pretty convincing. Biff's big one. Yeah, that one is very clearly not real. Also, I love whenever the little girl picks it up. You know, I got a pickle now. Oh, <laughs> great line. I love that line. Biff's one was also originally going to be called the Mad Dog in reference reference to uh mad dog tannen oh, yeah, um yeah. who uh, talking about them setting things up for the third movie they're already like lacing that stuff in yeah there was an awful lot uh i tell you what the future seems to make everyone a little bit more dramatic because biff's mates one of which is billy zane by the way uh yep yeah. <laughs> yeah i love that one of them says i can't remember which one griff's mates i should say sorry griff's mates you know hoverboards don't work on water and he goes unless you have power and the way he delivers the line <laughs> Like, what yeah. is that guy doing? Like, I'm a big fan of the hammy acting in the future in this <laughs> yeah. one. It's just like it just comes out of nowhere, and I really appreciate it being there. And in fact, actually, the, the, the there's like quite a lot of that from well, not so much from Marty, but Marty is confronted with a lot of it. So one thing I want I wanted to um, get your take on: Did this chicken thing come up in that first movie at all? No, it because they just throw it. They just no, and it doesn't, and they just throw it in here, and it's really just an opportunity for Michael J. Fox to respond to these people making like ridiculous claims well i think as well conrad it's also to build in for the trilogy some sort of you know learning journey for marty mcfly they didn't really have yeah. that no he didn't have a he didn't have an arc yeah he didn't really have an arc whereas they, they're building in an arc so now they're doing three they're like right we have to have an arc for him let's make him get to the point where he doesn't rise to the bait of being called chicken or yellow so they've started introducing that in the second film but i will say having remembered the trilogy as an adult watching thinking back to when i watched it as a child i really thought the chicken thing was throughout so they they actually did a good job of introducing a character trait for marty mcfly which seems to fit with the character i think maybe Maybe there was a bit of an allusion to it in the first film where his father was a real loser 
um, and yeah. he got picked on by Biff, and maybe it makes sense that he doesn't want to be his dad in that regard. He definitely doesn't back down from fights in that first movie, so it is kind of it is kind of there. It's just not mm-hmm. as explicitly stated. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you're right. It, it is introducing uh, an arc for the character, which I kind of enjoyed. I think it's I think it works reasonably well. Um. Wh- one thing I wanted to check with you: Did you know the word almanac before you saw this movie? The funny thing is, I genuinely. I can tell you 100% no, I didn't. I know it from this movie. But I, I watched this movie when I was so young that I've just like, always known the word. Yeah, it's I like it's the same with me. Like I internalized the word almanac probably at the age of like five. And that's just always been... I've always had that in the back pocket whenever anyone needs to talk about something with a lot of data in it. And, and, and it is Back to the Future 2's fault. It is really weird that they... like I can't, I can't imagine anyone's printing into hard copy an almanac these days. Like with the internet, there's really no need for it. Um, I will say that the, the, the topic of the almanac is uh is going to feature heavily in my in my plot hole extravaganza later on oh interesting okay well i'm gonna say this right now i think the floor of this movie and it is a good movie i, I don't dislike it i don't want to give the impression i do but i think the floor of it compared to the first and third one is in both of those movies there's only one setting so you get to the setting it's a fish out of water kind of action adventure with some comedy in it you get to know all the characters in that setting you get to learn who they are in this one you've got 1985 you've got uh a uh, or rather 2015 and you've got 1955 and you do have a bit of 1985 in there as well alternate alternate 1985 oh, well alternate 1985 yes but you never really settle into any one of those settings so you never really get to know any of the characters that well i think that's quite well encapsulated by the dinner sequence in 2015 when they go to catch up with marty and we get a moment michael j listen we like to keep things light here I'm, I'm going to try and keep this as light as we can. But Marlene McFly, yikes. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. Mom? Mom, is that you? That was a casting choice that I don't think has aged particularly well. Can you imagine, like, do you think Ma- Michael J. Fox was delighted with that when Robert Zemeckis said to him, and we're going to have you play your own daughter. Do you think that, do you think that he would think that's funny? Or was that one of the ones where like, all right, we'll trust you, Bob? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, what was this, 88? I think this came out. So it was probably like... 89, I think, yeah. People, people were probably... Yeah, I think you're right, 89. Like, people were, like loved the idea of making fun of cross-dressing in 1989. They couldn't get enough of it. Um, it just hasn't aged particularly well as a source of comedy, I don't think. I, I, I do find it funny, uh, but uh, we get the introduction of something else, not just uh, the, the the lady Michael J. Fox. We also get introduction to Michael J. Fox or Marty McFly's version of Biff uh, Needles. And isn't he played by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Flea, yeah, Flea, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, in the first one, this character didn't exist. And then all of a sudden, he's here, baiting Marty to do some nefarious deal. Now, I just want to say this to you, Conrad. If I ever get fired, I don't want to get fired while on the screen it's telling me that my boss doesn't like beer and Mexican food. Yeah. Why he couldn't turn off the information about me from the futuristic screen when he was firing his employee i don't know i'm kind of in two minds about that to be honest so uh elizabeth she walks in or jennifer walks in initially and it's playing like the scenery channel on on the wall which i was like that's actually quite accurate because that's like those netflix things where it's like three hours of a fireplace um it, yeah, like yeah, we do yeah. we do legitimately have that but then when when marty jr comes in and changes the channel and puts on like eight channels at the same time my first thought was that's actually pretty accurate as well to be honest because like our attention spans are absolutely shot to shit and we have to consume multiple different forms of uh, forms of media at the same time but you are absolutely right if i'm getting fired i'm turning those off like you know this is <laughs> i'm the breadwinner of this family and i've just lost my job this is humiliating like i need to focus or if you're the one doing the firing the last thing you want to this person who you're telling is not going to have a job anymore is for your children's names to be on there yeah don't give them that information we all know who Marty McFly Sr. is coming after now. Yeah, exactly. There's there's massive data protection concerns about this, actually, which is something that, that Robert Zemeckis and, and, and Bob Gale have singularly failed to uh, <laughs> failed to uh, to predict. Okay, so, Jennifer, let's talk about her quickly. Elizabeth Shue, she, she's asked to do a lot more in this movie, particularly in this scene, um, than than she was in the previous one, although they do kind of get her out of the way pretty quickly after this. 
I thought she was quite a good physical comedian though for what she was asked to do. A lot of lot of fainting, a lot of pratfalls, a lot of kind of stumbling around in a daze. How, how did you find her on a rewatch? Yeah, no, no, I thought it was okay. I thought the, the decision to leave her in an alleyway was a questionable one. She'll be fine. Dot Brown said it. Why couldn't they just leave her in the car? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> just leave her in the car. But yeah, she did what she had to do. She was like our, our little sort of inspector in that scene, I suppose. We got meant we got to see the whole thing. But the biggest issue with me, Conrad, is and this is maybe where I'll just quickly, before we get into the whole alternate stuff, right? The biggest, well, actually, it does bear saying just before we get there, like, old Biff takes her almanac back to the 50s, gives it to his younger self. So by the time Doc and Marty get back to 85, it's now alternate where Biff yeah. is the god of the world. It's all changed. Based on that premise, right? What Jennifer saw in this house shouldn't have existed, all right? That's the first plot hole in uh, Anthony's plot hole extravaganza here. Because whenever Marty and Jennifer went with Doc into the future, time can't assume they're going to get back. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a big problem in, in this movie. They'll, they'll be back. They'll be back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, you know, they shouldn't have been in the future because they, they went missing. They should have been like, we, sh- we should have had like really cop drama about them being missing. These two teenagers go missing. We should never have seen them as older people because they didn't grow old. They went into the future. That's the first plot hole of the plot hole extravaganza. The second one is that when Biff took the almanac and went back to 55 and then gave himself the almanac, came back to 2015, he should not have returned to this 2015. He should have returned to the alternate 2015. Yeah, that's a good point as well, actually. Yeah. Because when whenever Marty uh, said we have to go back to 2015 to get old Biff to not take the almanac back, Emmett Brown in, in alternate 85 said, we can't go back. We can't go back to the future <laughs> because it'll be an alternate 2015. Yeah, they even acknowledged it that there's like a splinter a splinter timeline at that point. So they don't know what they're doing. The, the other, the, So the last sort of big one that I'll make mention is that he mentions that when Jennifer is left on the swinging chair on her porch and Einstein yeah. the dog is left in 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 85 as well uh Dr Emmett Brown says and whenever Marty's like, should we take them with us? Because they're, they're going to be in the alternate. And he says, no, you don't understand. When we fix the past, the 85 will, will change. It'll instantaneously transform around them. And they'll be in the new 85. But we know that's not true. Because otherwise, the 2015 that they were in would have changed around them whenever Biff changed the past. Yeah, it's, it's one of the two. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the first film, you were sitting there and you were saying things to me like, yeah, but Mayor Gordy Wilson got, could have got the idea somewhere else. Yeah, someone else probably invented the skateboard. In this one, there's really no argument. No. Um, okay, well, they go back to 85 first, mm-hmm. in 2015, and Biff... Well, okay, how, how do you feel about uh, 85 Biff in this one, um, compared to Biff in in, uh, in the previous movie? Great chest. Great chest. I think... Great chest. Lovely. I mean, you could say that about, uh, about Lorraine as well. <laughs> Biff made that happen, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did, yes. I actually really, really enjoyed this little uh, pit stop into this alternate... 85. This is a really interesting kind of midway point in the the descent of Biff's character from he he's a bully and a monster in the first movie and he is he is abusive but that's like child's play compared to where they take his character mm-hmm. where like in this one he's he's a straight up murderer he killed George McFly and simply by being prominent and successful in society he has ushered in a dystopia yeah. in hill valley <laughs> like he, he's based um a pretty or pretty heavily inspired by donald trump in the 80s which given like how the last few years in american politics yeah, yeah. have gone we've seen how donald trump runs things maybe this is very accurate <laughs> Uh, even by the standards that Biff sets in the first movie, I feel like this is a pretty big departure for his character. At this point, he, he's just like he's just like almost evil incarnate. We'll have to wait one more film yeah. to see that, but he's almost yeah. there. Um, I think he's getting there. He's getting there. He's slowly but surely getting there. He's like beginning. <laughs> he's like the character's being boiled down to just his, his essence yeah. of evil as we go. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Connor, what did you think about the uh, the revisiting of Fifty Five once they went back to decide to uh, to to change uh, the past of the alternate world? Did you did you think that they they successfully sort of intertwined uh, the current story in the second one with what happened in the past? Yeah, like I, th- I think actually that's the strongest bit of the movie for me. I think it's really good. it's good fun. Um, I like a lot of the set pieces. So the one with um, with Marty in the back of the car after Biff has left mm. uh, or been kicked out of the uh, Enchantment Under the Sea dance, he's got the almanac with him. Uh, 
that's great fun. The the only bit I didn't like about that scene is when Marty is like radioing Doc from the back of Biff's car, <laughs> yeah. and he is shouting over the radio. It's like he's got, he he's not deaf. Like he's a, Biff is three feet away from you. He's going to hear you. Like it's never mind the mirrors. But yeah, it's it's a really it's a really um good uh, conclusion to to that story. I think, and I I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and well, one thing I'll say about that radio uh, thing, Conrad is. When I watch like Stranger Things and something something said in the eighties, and they've always got walkie-talkies with them, I've I always kind of viewed that as like modern day writers don't know how to write in a world where cell phones don't exist, so they always have to have these eighties characters with walkie-talkies. But this was written in the eighties, and they also have walkie-talkies. Oh, I mean, people have been doing that shit for years though. Like, I'm, there's like um, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but there, there's some like. It's not the Guns of Navarone, but it's some war movie from the fifties, and um, and some character basically like radio it radios in an airstrike, um, in like he radios the UK for an airstrike from like the Swiss Alps or something, which is just like that's not how radios work. Like they don't <laughs> they don't have an unlimited range, and this is the same kind of thing. Like people have just been saying, I don't know, radios are magic. You can talk to anyone on a, yeah, on yeah. a radio yeah. since since the dawn of radios, basically. Yeah, and I suppose, like, you know, I think they intertwine it very well. I, I, what I don't like is, again, me being nitpicky, I don't like how they kind of were implying, just through the, the way things happened, that if we were to believe that just off camera uh, in the first one, this stuff was already happening as well, which the way mm. that the story's been set up, it's like, no, no, that wasn't happening. It's, it's, it's not really the way they're doing time travel, but they don't really know what way they're doing time travel. They're just throwing shit at a wall yeah. or throwing shit on Biff, I should say, <laughs> and seeing what sticks. <laughs> yeah. Because because this man, weird, it's a weird little cornerstone of a trilogy, to be honest with you, to always have <laughs> the bad guy getting covered in manure by the end. He gets covered in shit, yeah. They rhyme. Uh, in this one, uh, he crashed into the manure car, get, uh, or the manure... Uh, truck gets covered in it spits out a bunch and then says i hate manure <laughs> yeah. and it's sort of it's one of those things where it's like you don't really need to say that do you like no <laughs> one likes manure yeah, yeah. or maybe some people but like broadly broadly most people are in agreement that they don't want to get covered in manure that's not a good day i mean yeah like he, and he also like yells shit as he's sliding into like that's the funny part yeah <laughs> i think they did they did it really well uh to be honest with you um and then we get the the classic little stinger at the end back to the future always ends with a little stinger uh you sent me a letter yeah well i it's yeah so this movie basically they had started shooting back to the future 3 by the time they finished production on this although i mean the act the letter scene they they added that at, like obviously that was done before they put the literal trailer for back to the future 3 at the end of the movie oh my god fantastic but uh yeah so robert zemeckis and bob gale claim that they didn't plan for a sequel at the end of back to the future 1 i don't think there's any way that they could claim they weren't planning for a sequel yeah. <laughs> at the end of this one because doc gets zapped by lightning seemingly killed and then and then someone delivers this letter they've been holding on to 70 years 70 years yeah they would never do that they would <laughs> never do not in a million that's the most unrealistic thing about this whole movie that the postal service would be like yeah we'll hold on to this letter for 70 yeah. years and deliver it at this exact time on this exact date in this exact place for you like that postman's gonna be like oh, i'll just leave it like I'll, I'll, I'll knock off early tonight but um yeah he gets the letter it's from dot brown in 85 and then we get a literal trailer for truck back to the future 3 at the end of the movie like that fuck your marvel movies with like a stinger being like oh captain marvel's gonna be turning up a literal trailer at the end of the movie for the next that was the most nostalgic thing for me to be honest with you because i completely forgot that was going to happen and i remember having this on vhs and i remember like always like watching that part and i didn't have the third one on vhs yet for whatever reason and i remember thinking oh my god oh my god i really want to watch that that was really nostalgic for me seeing that that trailer who the hell does that no well no one a trailer to the next film yeah imagine walking out of that cinema you know, you'd just be like, oh my god, put that in my brain right now. They should do it more often. I wish they'd just be... I mean, they kind of do. Marvel Stingers are, are similar to that, but I just love how like bold-faced it is. Like, here's a trailer. You have to watch it, because yeah, yeah. it's at the, the end of this movie. You have no choice. You can't walk out, because there might be something after this. You haven't seen credits yet. But yeah, it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, that's the end of Back to the Future 2. Uh, let's get into some trivia. Let's do a trivia section. Let's do it. First bit of trivia. Trivia number one. This is the first movie appearance of Elijah Wood. He's uh, he's one of the little boys in the arcade. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't spot him. Billy Zane and Elijah Wood got their starts in Back to the Future. Who would have thought? At, well, I don't know if this is his start, but the guy who would go on to play Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat, as well as Bruce Lee in Dragon of Bruce Lee Story, was also one of Biff's boys in uh, in 2015. 
So that was fun. But Biff had some big boys, and then Biff just went away. Then Biff disappeared. Yeah, like or, or Griff, I should say, actually. What are Griff's boys? Okay, next bit of trivia. The flavours of Pepsi, its original diet, Max and Perfect, are the four flavours. And Pepsi Max would not actually debut until 1993, and it first appeared in Europe. So this preempted Pepsi Max. Whoa, that's really interesting. By three years. I don't know if, if it was in... I assume it probably was. I assume Pepsi were like, Pepsi Max is a pretty cool name for a drink. We should do that. They must, they must have done that. Yeah. I would be asking for a little bit of that Pepsi Max coin if I was Robert Zemeckis. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. you have the name, but I want 2% of every sale. And then they could then they could have made Back to the Future 4. That's unbelievable. And the last thing, so that I wanted to talk about this briefly. There's a lot of really cool shots of actors playing more than one character in a scene in this movie they really they really lean into that you get the marty and marlene mcfly you get the biff and griff stuff and they'll do that again in back to the future 3 they'll use it a lot um it has a very kind of nutty professor to the clumps vibe to, oh great <laughs> to, film to great it. film <laughs> yeah so um i don't know if you know this but basically they developed a camera for the for back to the future 2 called the vista glide um which is essentially from a company called vista vision and it's um a, a camera that there, w- there was some blue screen in it as well, but it was mainly using that. And basically it had like an automated dolly control system with the camera with immediate video playback. So what you could do is you could basically make the camera perform exactly the same moves um, oh, cool. and film film a scene twice with the actor on, on both sides of it. or While the camera's moving, which makes it more realistic, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and you then see the video playback to make sure it looks convincing. So that's how they did all of it and why they did so much of it, because they literally developed that camera for this movie and for Back to the Future 3. Well, there you go. So there you Jeez, go. Back, Back to the Future is, is a very important film in many ways. It is, yeah. I mean, that technology, it, look, it still looks great. But yeah, that's our trivia. You've heard it. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Get involved in the comments down below. You know, like it, subscribe it, do all that good stuff. Um, let us know which of the timelines you'd like to live in perhaps. <laughs> and let us know how you think about how you feel about Anthony's uh, numerous plot holes that he's discovered for this. How much How much do you hate Back to the Future 2 now that you <laughs> <laughs> those plot holes have been revealed? And join us next time. We're going off to the Old West for Back to the Future 3, which not to spoil anything, but that's a pretty good movie. A lot better than I remember it being, so join us for that one. Eat lead, slackers!